is such a powerful, such an impactful thing to pray for somebody who hurts you. It is very, very, very crucial that we do not enter into the next year with unforgiveness. Romans 12, 19. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. The nature of man was broken. So we are a broken people living in a broken world, which means that we are very imperfect. We are full of flaws. We are full of mistakes. We hurt each other. We step on each other. We do things that we should not do to one another. This is the reason why during Christmas time, God gave himself, himself to us through the person of Jesus Christ that we will be able to do and be who God wants us to be. It's a perfect time for you to really reflect, um, for you to really consider letting go of any resentment, any um, grudge that you may be holding for many, many, many years. Maybe you have a grudge with a family member, with a friend. There's somebody who did something very negative to you that has impacted your life. But the truth of the matter is, unless you forgive them, you remain caged. Unless you let it go, you will also not be able to move forward in your life. You learn all of these things are very, very dangerous for any human being, whether you're Christian or not. The Bible says that be angry, but do not let, do not sin in your anger. It means that it's okay to be angry at sin. It's okay to be angry at the wrong that was done, but don't hold on to it so much that it becomes bitterness. It takes root in you because we were forgiven when we did not even ask for forgiveness. Um, we also ought to forgive one another. Whenever you are holding a grudge against someone, uh, uh, beloved, you have lost your control. You have lost control of your emotions, you've lost control of your soul, something else has gained control over you and it's not light, it's not Jesus, it's darkness. First of all, you have to admit that, yes, this thing did affect me negatively and maybe I'm holding it in and I need to do something about it. It's very good to go into the presence of God. Don't always go trying to bind, lose, bind, lose, bind, lose. Sometimes the binding and losing will never happen because you have an issue that you haven't dealt with. There is a repentance that must take place in order for God to move on your behalf, because God is very principled. This is something that God told me many years ago, that you have to adjust yourself to my word. I don't adjust my word to you. So you got to know what the word says, and you've got to go by what the word says. So the word of God was very clear, that if I do not forgive, my sins would not be forgiven me. We are all on a different level in our work with God. Having this, you know, this, this understanding actually does help the way you relate to people so that you don't project on people perfection that they cannot give you. They cannot offer you perfection. That's why the Bible says we should bear with one another. When we have bitterness or resentment, it interrupts with our flow uh, with God. That means that you can be going to church, you can be preaching, you can be offering whatever service has been allotted you in the house of God, and yet God is not interested because you have this grudge, you have you are resentful towards another person. That is the rule. That is the ordinance that is set. When you hold on to somebody's sins that they have, you know, they have committed against you, your sins are also held against you. And then we check these things. David said, "Search my heart, O Lord, and know if there's any wicked way in me." This is a wicked way to hold a grudge against someone. Is a wicked way to have resentment in you towards someone. Is a wicked way. Another thing too that can happen to you when you are holding bitterness in you is that you your prayers will not be answered. Another reason why you want to deal with this bitterness is because bitterness towards someone makes your body sick. Makes your, It affects your body. It affects your emotions. It affects a person mentally. So bitterness can make your body sick. Another thing too that I, I, I realized is that um, every human, every child of God has light. The light of Christ is in every child of God. And also we carry the fragrance of the knowledge of Christ. Now, when you are walking in bitterness, these two things I just mentioned are affected. When you are walking in bitterness, your light is dim. When you are walking in resentment, it affects the light inside of you. Your light will be dimmed. And if your light will not be able to shine brightly, it means you will not be impactful. The greater your light, the more authority, authority you, 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 you command. So the enemy now has access to you all because of the resentment, the bitterness that you are harboring inside of you. The, the fragrance part is also like this. We... The knowledge of God, the fact that you are, you know, keeping to the knowledge of God and you are, you have chosen to walk in forgiveness every time something happens and you are staying in the word of God, you are always diffusing the fragrance of Christ. But the moment you change that uh, disposition and then you start to hold on to this uh, bitterness and resentment, it affects your spiritual fragrance. So your scent in the realm of the spirit now becomes 
foul in the nostrils of God. And when that happens, once again, you are opened for the enemy to come through. If you interrupt your access into the presence of God, your prayers will not be heard. Your prayers will not be heard and answered. If God even hears you, he won't answer you because he's a principled God and he does not break his covenant or alter the words that have come out of his mouth. And if you allow bitterness and resentment, you can make yourself sick with sometimes even uh, you can make yourself sick with all kinds of diseases. You can have all kinds of symptoms in your body that can hurt you, that can harm you, all because of bitterness and resentment. And also, finally, that your spiritual disposition is altered, altered negatively. Your light is dimmed. You don't. You no longer have the pleasing scent that attracts God's presence, that God loves to smell from you. Now you have, in the realm of the Spirit, a scent that is disgusting, that is repulsive to the Lord, and He doesn't want to be near you. And I'm sure somebody may be saying, you have no idea what happened to me. I was molested. I was raped. I was betrayed by people that were supposed to, or someone that was supposed to care for me. I was, I was, I was betrayed by a friend because of what my friend did. I ended up marrying the wrong person. I was, you know, you, listen, you have every justifiable reason to get angry. But at the same time, if you are a child of God, you cannot do whatever you want. You see, when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal savior, and Lord here means that I'm going to put down my will and I'm taking your will. It is possible to overcome all those things. You can have the memory, but it will have no impact on you. He restores you and makes you whole. But all you have to do is to let it go. God can make you whole, but you've got to let it go so that he can take charge. Let this resentment go, this bitterness go. You will be able to walk into your future and enjoy your future. A process of, of you know restoration, you have to start by repenting. Repenting of the fact that you, you, you broke the commandment of God, yes, by holding on these grudges, by being resentful, by holding on to this bitterness, you sinned against God. And now you pray for that person and bless that person. I'm telling you, you can mention that person's name and say that I forgive you. By the help of the Holy Spirit, I forgive you. I let you go. I refuse to hold on to this wrong. I refuse to hold on to it. I let you go in Jesus' name. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I love you. I need to pray for that person. Listen, it is such a powerful such an impactful thing to pray for somebody who hurts you god will heap coals of fire and he will bless he will restore he will do whatever he needs to do because he's god he knows all the the different things going on with these people so you just do your part be obedient to his word okay just be obedient this christmas and make up your mind to repent pray for the people that have hurt you speaking to yourself I am a child of God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I cannot hold a grudge against anyone because I am love. I am walking in love. Darkness cannot overpower me. I am love. I am light. I have been liberated. I love all men. I am walking in the peace of God with all men. I am not going to hold any grudge. Talking about love, love. So it is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. Easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Also allow God by you praying for your enemies or whoever you know hurt you, by you doing that, you off you, you afford God the opportunity to step into the matter and handle it the way He wants to handle it. Overcome evil with good. So do good to those who are even doing evil to you. Now you may do just act in kindness towards that person is part of your restoration process. You're praying for them and you're also going to act in kindness. I'm going to act in faith towards them. Guard your heart with all diligence because out of it comes the issues of life. So you want to guide your heart by not engaging in contaminations. The scripture says that do not cast your pearls. Your pearls means that something that's precious to you. Do not cast your precious things before the swine. The Bible says they will trample over it and turn around and attack you. Sometimes it can be an opportunity for you to grow. When these things happen to you and you see the way you are reacting, the way you are behaving, um, you can know where you are in your spiritual walk and you it helps you to know what you need to work on um the area of love i realize that why god always tells me about love is because the bible says in romans 13 8 that when you walk in love you have fulfilled the whole law so practice the wisdom that i'm talking to you about that you love men but you don't put yourself in a place where they will destroy you john 2 24 and 25 the bible says but jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men and had no need that anyone should testify of man for he knew what was in man hallelujah you know, as much as you can prevent certain things you prevent them do, do the best you can with it but walk in love okay that doesn't mean that you're going to be very suspicious of everyone that is also a sin by the way the bible says that love believes in all things uh, uh hopes in all things so we have to believe you have to hope 
we have to interact uh, but we also have to have the wisdom to guard our hearts with all diligence it means we have to be careful so let anyone who has ears listen to what the spirit is saying and be delivered be healed be made whole and go and make others whole as well in the mighty name of jesus christ and as you are taking steps to do that may the lord release abundant grace super abundant grace upon you to be able to completely walk in liberty walk freely walk completely liberated from any shackles any prisons of your past in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ